Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome to Hashtag Study Sesh, brought to you by Boston Broadcast. My name is Sureshni Ryder. I'm your host today. But as always, I'm always joined by an amazing expert from your part of the world. Please welcome Dr. Laura Fisher. She is an expert in cognitive psychology. And today's topic is Unleashing the Power of Mnemonic Devices. Laura, let me start here. Can you remind us about the acronym Pomodoro that helps university students manage their time and focus on their sessions? Yeah, sure. So um, it's such a funny word, um, but it, it's <laughs> been flying around uh, the hallways of universities for as long as I can possibly remember. Um, so it sounds like pom- Italian cheese. Yeah. Pomodoro. Pomodoro. <laughs> Pomodoro. <laughs> um, so, okay. The first thing is that Pomodoro is a mnemonic device. Um, and it's a mnemonic device in that it is an acronym that reminds you of certain things. And it's sort of the critical things that all university students need to know. P, plan. Before you start, what you're going to do, go back to the basics of what we start covered at the beginning of the study sessions and, you know, take time to plan out. Okay, what am I doing in this next hour? Um, what do I want to accomplish? And then you can even break it down into smaller tasks. Um, stay organized, which is your O. So set up that sacred study space with the materials that you need in it, with the noise removed from it. Um, M is manage yourself. And the way we suggest this, or I suggest this, is we're not built to be able to concentrate for like insurmountable periods of time. So break your um, study sessions down into 25 uh 25 minute intervals which mm-hmm. is actually known as pomodoras this is where the word comes from okay during yes. each pomodora uh focus solely on studying and avoid distractions so the o in pomodoro is optimized so use five minute breaks between each of your pomodoras to rest, stretch, grab a snack, uh, take a breath outside, um, which helps you to maintain focus and energy. Uh, D, determine at the end of each of your Pomodoros uh, how productive you were. Uh, you'll remember us speaking about a study energy meter. You know, was this a good time for you to study or was it a disaster? And make adjustments based on how you felt the study time went. And then observe, um, reflect on your study session, you know, observe what methods work best for you and use this information to study your habits as you move into the future. Because in today's world, we are lifelong learners. We have to be. The world's moving too rapidly to say we know it all. You know, today, today's information is already old information. Yeah. Um, and then your R is um, repeat. So implement this uh, Pomodoro technique regularly and improve your time management, your productivity and your focus in your sessions. And then, of course, celebrate, which is not reflected in the Pomodoro, but <laughs> yeah. I just say the Pomodoro, the last O is obviously celebrate the small victories that you uh, managed to accomplish. So I think, we, you know, we've discussed some of this in the importance of time management in session one together. But yeah. um, as we get into some of the more exciting elements of unleashing the power of mnemonic devices, this is a really good place to start because it's a good mnemonic device to remind you how to just keep yourself going as a student um, through your studies. Dr. Fisher, let me ask you this. Can you start explaining to our audience what mnemonic devices are and how they actually aid in our memorization? Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, mnemonic devices are tools or techniques that can quickly boost your ability to remember, retain and retrieve information very quickly. So they've been used actually for well over 2000 years and they've been being studied experimentally um, over for over 40 years because the memory technique itself allows your brain to encode important information in a unique way and this simple shortcut creates an association between the information you're trying to remember and also the association um, that you've created. So it's easier for our brains to retain information when we've got an association. So these devices leverage our natural cognitive processes, such as visualizing, pattern recognition, storytelling, to actually enable us to quickly recall things that we might otherwise find ourselves completely unable to recall. Um, so interestingly, research conducted by numerous psychologists, cognitive psychologists, have consistently shown that mnemonic devices can significantly improve memory performance, particularly when compared to rote memorization techniques, because it really engages uh, your brain in a much more meaningful way um, so that you encode information and then you're able to retrieve it because of the association that you've used when you encode it. So I use this to remember people's names. So we have two little girls that have just moved down the road. Uh, the older one is Emma and the younger one, she's small, her name's Sarah. So E and S, older, ah. smaller, Emma, Sarah. So, you know, you can use these and it helps you to quickly remember things that otherwise you wouldn't necessarily remember. I don't think I'm ever going to forget elderly Sarah, elderly Emma and small Sarah. I just love the way you put that in. Um, could you tell us what type of mnemonic devices actually exist and how students can benefit from using them? Yeah. So essentially there's three uh, main mnemonic devices. There's imagery mnemonics, there's acronyms and acrostics, and then there's also method of loci, or a memory palace. Um, so we'll go into each of those because they're really interesting. So imagery uh, mnemonics involve creating vivid mental images related to the content you want to remember. For instance, if you're learning a list of historical dates, uh, you can visualize each date as a scene or a picture. So research shows that our brains better respond to images than words. So we're able to much more quickly um, associate what, our, what the image is telling us. All of us know what the golden arches are. It's McDonald's. You know, it's yeah. the same with Target, Amazon. These things are ingrained into people's brains. Why are they ingrained? Because there's a visual association. Um, that visual specific picture then comes with a recall of information that you previously associated with the image, um, making the information easier to remember. So when creating a imagery mnemonic, try to make your images as distinct as possible and as strong as possible. And try to add some motion to the image um, so I'll tell you a really funny one. Um, I never thought I'd ever be able to learn all the parts of the brain. Uh, it's just way too medically complex for me. But I learned the brain in 20 minutes using a mnemonic. And okay. the, there's a part of our brain, the thalamus, which directs um, where the information should go. And the guy teaching us had two little Lego men and they were called Hal, Thal and Amos and Thalamus. So they were policemen and they were directing and he like yanked these legs around and, you know, pushed them. And actually 
I'll never forget what the thalamus does um, because of that association, the wow. visual association. So if you can pick out distinguishing features about difficult information that you're supposed to remember, like the hippocampus is where we retain long-term memory. You know, a hippo is a very large thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the hippocampus is actually a large space in our brain where we're able to create long-term memory. Um, the amygdala, it, it, like this guy explained it as like a, a, a jet airplane, like zooming down and uh, flying and, f and yes. or freezing or, um, you know, so it's your flight, fight, flight or freeze response exists within the amygdala. So all of these uh, images made something that I thought I would never, ever be able to remember very easy. So that is a really, really good um, use of imagery mnemonics. Um, imagery mnemonics is also really helpful if you struggle with spelling. Um, for example, that you can remember the difference between the principal um, who is the principal of your school? Uh, because he is not your pal. Not your pal. P -A -L. Yes, that's what I. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, versus the principal <laughs> of thermodynamics, -E. which is just the PLE. Um, yeah. So you know, <laughs> it, it's these sorts of things that we can use as images, and we're really creative beings. So imagery mnemonics is is stunning, in my opinion. Acronyms are also a form of mnemonic device. Acronyms are abbreviations. So we spoke about the Pomodoro effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Um, we are using the first letter of um, a word to remind us of something else that we have to recall. So, mm -hmm. you know, a popular example of a mnemonic device uh, when teaching little kids the color of the rainbow yes, is right. Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> we red, orange, Roy G. yellow, Biv. green, I don't know how. Yeah. Um, blue, indigo, and violet. Yeah. The symbol acronym, an abbreviation that put together, reminds us of the first letters of other words and then pronounced... Um, when we pronounce out those other words, we've actually learned something without even realizing it. Acrostics are very similar. Um, so, you know, that we use acrostics more um, as using the first letter of each word in a sentence or a phrase to create a memorable um, association with some information. So to um, remember the order of operations in algebra, we have to think of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, um, the first letter of every word in this sentence corresponds with the order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, or you've probably heard people say, never eat shredded wheat, um, or uh, never eat silkworms, I think is more <laughs> probably never common in South worms. Africa. Um, yes. When referring to north, uh, south. never eat north, east, east, silkworm, south. southwest. Um, so that's acronyms and acrostics. And then just finally is the method of loci or building a memory palace. Uh, this is a really ancient technique, actually. It involves mentally placing yourself within a familiar location, such as your home, and imagining walking through each room and associating specific content, con concepts with the objects in that room. So the spatial relationships help to organize information, making it easier for later retrieval. So, um, I, I mean, there's a, the, there's a lot of different examples I can give, but... In short, those are the three uh, main mnemonic devices.
Similarly to what we have unpacked in previous sessions when we try to figure out what type of learners we are, whether we are visual learners or auditory learners, in the same way you've just spoke about acronyms, acrostics, loci, etc. Now, how do we figure out if you're a student, how do we put these insights and go, hey, this technique is actually my vibe. This is the one that yeah. speaks most to me. How do how do kids figure this out? Yeah, so, I mean, without a doubt, um, some of you would have been thinking, um, there's no way I can remember an acronym that long for <sighs> math. And to be honest, yeah. I was even thinking, oh, I hope I can remember it for the <laughs> session because that's just not my vibe. But when, but, <laughs> but when it comes to the visual imagery, that for me is really profound. So if we go back a couple of sessions and we think about what we spoke about in terms of your dominant learning style and the features in your dominant learning style, those features often will determine the mnemonic technique that will best be suited to you. So without a doubt, a student's learning style influences the decision on mnemonic technique. You know, as listeners recall, learning styles refer to the preferred way in which we process information and in which we are able to then recall informa retain information and then recall it. So visual learners tend to excel at these um, uh, memory palaces. Um, you know, it's just unbelievable. They have such visual um, formats to uh, retain information and they're able to use mental images that they can leverage to strengthen their visual processing as a dominant learning technique to help them to uh, learn their information more adequately. On the other hand, someone who is an auditory learner um, may prefer like acronyms or acrostics because they, yeah. invo they involve uh, creating like verbal associations um, or they're like a bit poetic or they're quite engaging because they're a bit, bit verbally repetitive. So the mnemonic technique generally works well and aligns well with the learning preference. Kinesthetic learners, again, going back to the memory palace, really, really um, the method of loci or the memory palace works brilliant for kinesthetic learners because they can literally envisage themselves moving through their memory palace. So you've got to just decide for yourself, um, you know, which of the, which of the, um, mnemonic devices works for me. So for me, imagery mnemonics works really well. I create vivid images. Um, if I teach within one lesson, I will know everyone's names um, uh -huh. because I'll go around the class and I mean, it's a skill that you hone, but everyone tells me their name and one thing about them and I associate those two things and by the time you leave I'll say goodbye to each of you by name um, but that doesn't necessarily work for everyone um, okay. I on the other hand tend to get terribly lost wherever I go <laughs> and so a memory palace is an absolute disaster despite the <laughs> fact that it's actually quite a visual and creative way to remember information so you've just got to work out what works best for you. What we're really looking for is for you to find a mnemonic technique that will enable you to learn what you need to learn and achieve the outcomes that you need to achieve um, for your studies. And that's why we're giving you these tools. So as we wrap up this particular edition of Study Sesh brought to you by Boston Broadcast, Dr. Fisher, how do you think, or what, actually, let me go here. What takeaways can students get from this entire interview that is going to enable them to unleash the power of mnemonic devices, uh, memory capabilities, things to enhance their whole learning experience? Okay, I mean, I could sum up in one word, Pomodoro, and, <laughs> yes. and please just uh, plan, organize, manage yourself, optimize, determine what works for you, observe how you feel at the end of each session, repeat, and then 
obviously take time to celebrate. Um, so yes. that word kind of sums it all up, but I'll give you a little bit more than that. Um, <laughs> I think these mnemonic devices are really, really powerful, especially when you have to learn large quantities of material. I can still remember um, poems that I wrote uh, to learn my history essay questions in matric. Oh, yes. And I'm old. Matric was a long time ago. <laughs> So, um, you know, mnemonic devices are tools and techniques that really do aid um, memory retention and recall by creating associations. I think to work out what type of mnemonic device, and we've mentioned several, including imagery, um, acronyms and acrostics, and the method of loci, or as I prefer, the memory palace, each cater to a different learning style. Um, so you'll have to go back and have a think about, well, what's my learning style and what might help me try it out a bit? Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, and then I think just, you know, really, uh, I, I think I've probably said this at the end of every session, but you don't have <laughs> to do it all. Find something that works for you and consider that you are unique. And that when you find something that works for you, stick with it, nurture it, and consider the nature of the information that you need to remember, and then actually believe that you are able to remember what it is you need to remember. Because I think that the biggest thing that comes in our way in terms of really trapping us as we move forward in our studies, is self-doubt around our ability to retain information. And so unleashing the power of mnemonic devices in your life is incredible. It enhances your memory capabilities, it improves your study habits, and ultimately it will achieve, it will result in you achieving academic success. And that's really what I want to see for you. Ah, oh, if this could be the episode that is the life hack or the episode that is your roadmap, please make sure you download and keep that because that is such valuable advice from Dr. Laura Fisher. She is an expert in cognitive psychology and this is one of the reasons why we have her on these study sessions because she's unpacking and unlocking just unbelievable nuggets of information and a wealth of knowledge. So thank you so much, Dr. Fisher. Um, I wish students back in the day when I was studying had this um, had this as their roadmap and I think what you've just said is so important like don't be so hard on yourself give yourself grace but if you follow these methods it could actually be the game changer um something that elevates the way you study and maybe just like hey it's okay i got this one step at a time pomodoro you're gonna get this pomodoro. You really <laughs> pomodoro. <laughs> and you know what at least now roy gabov can rest now and i've learned a brand new one <laughs> And then please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So those are the things that, like I said, when we've carried through generations. It's, yeah. it's a little technique. So give yourself some grace, give yourself some time, and please go back and visit these YouTube sessions. Go back and download them. Go back and, and figure out, okay, let's try these techniques that we've learned. It is knowledge with understanding. That is what we're trying to achieve here with a Study Set. Brought to you, of course, proudly by Boston Broadcast. My name is Sureshni Ryder. Thank you so much to Dr. Laura Fisher. We will catch up with you soon. Thank you.